Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, always great to see this uh, beautiful example of uh, Swiss hospitality and efficiency in uh, Brussels. Um, I'm really pleased to be here um, and I'm really very happy to see the lively interest there is uh, for science and sustainability and the relationship uh, between the two. I think no one can ignore anymore that if there is one challenge we have but also opportunity in the decades to come, it's sustainability. Um, that is very clear in what we see happening with our planet. Uh, we know about the planetary, planetary boundaries, that uh, some of which we've already crossed. Um, but it's not only true for the planet, it's also true for the sustainability of our societies. Of, and in Europe, I would say, the sustainability of the European social model that we want to see continue in the future, because we deeply uh, believe in this. Um, and for all this, to be sustainable, um, we actually need to deliver um, on the saying of Lampedusa, who said um, everything needs to change so that they can st it can stay the same. But we need to do that without falling in the trap that Alphonse Carr uh, put up for us. Uh, Alphonse Carr famously said in 1839, plus ça change, plus ça reste la même chose. So we're a little bit in the conundrum here. We need to change for things to remain the same, but without staying the same. Um, that is the challenge uh, we have ahead of us. Um, fortunately, we have since 2015 the Sustainable Development Goals, to which all countries in the world have adhered and have assigned uh, to. Sustainable Development Goals, which are now universally applicable. Um, it is not only applicable to developing countries as the MDGs were. SDGs are now globally applicable to every single country in the world. Um, it's a global contract for humanity for the decades to come. And we have a lot of work uh, to do. And one way in which we can help deliver on these sustainability goals is through science, technology and innovation. Actually, the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda has defined science, technology and innovation as an integral means of implementation of the development agenda. Um, on the same level as, for example, trade policy or development assistance. Uh, science, technology and innovation go to the core of what humanity needs to do together and each individually to help deliver um, on this global contract for sustainable uh, development. What is often overlooked is that uh, one of the 169 targets in the 2030 agenda is that every country in the world, without exception, should by 2030 invest public funds in research to the order of 1% of GDP. That is actually also a European target. We have the 3% target, um, of which 2% should come from the private sector and 1% from the public sector. This is now a global agenda, and all the countries in the world have signed up to this. Um, as you know, in Europe we have a tradition of uh, promoting sustainability. This is actually in our treaty, in Article 3 of the European Treaty, that everything we do has to contribute to sustainable uh, development. Horizon 2020, um, which is the currently running program in which Switzerland is a very valued uh, partner, 60% of the budget of uh, Horizon 2020 has to contribute to sustainable development. And I'm happy to report that as of now, we can say we will probably overshoot uh, that uh, target of uh, 60%. And as we're slowly looking at what the future could bring and the next framework program, it is very clear to us if we're looking at being open to the world and addressing global challenges, that the Sustainable Development Goals and the 2030 Agenda will have to be a common reference framework uh, for tackling together these challenges through cooperation in science and technology and innovation. Um, there are different ways in which we will be 
hopefully able to do this if we get sufficient resources. Um, one is through the concept of missions, where we really want to target sustainable development goals, not individually, but with a good interlinkage between them, um, and set really ambitious targets uh, for Europe, for science, technology and innovation to deliver on them. But the other way in which we are already doing it and will do even more is through open science. Um, what I would like to assert uh, tonight is that sustainability and open science are a marriage in waiting. Sustainability and science already know each other since a long time. They are engaged since a long time. We now have to make sure they get married, that we can tie the knot. And the more science becomes open, the more fruitful and happy the, mass, the marriage uh, will be. Openness, uh, which is a key principle for our European Commissioner and our science and innovation policy at European level, is really about breaking down barriers and borders uh, that exist of all kinds uh, between disciplines, between sectors, between countries, not just in Europe but across the world, um, between science and society. So that's what we're trying uh, to strive for. And if you look at it, um, open science and sustainable development goals have quite a number of characteristics uh, in common. Um, they are very global in nature. Science is a global endeavor. Open science will make it even more uh, global, just like the sustainable development goals, which are a global uh, contract. They are really both about collaboration. Collaboration goes to the heart of sustainability, but also open science. Actually, open science is the coming of the collaborative economy, the sharing economy to science and the scientific endeavor, made possible by this tremendous revolution in the digital world, uh, which allows this kind of collaboration. Um, and there, I should say that when we look at sustainable development goals and the roles of science and technology, uh, what we see is that with the framework programs at European level, we have developed a unique model of cross-border transdisciplinary collaboration with more than 40 countries that have now signed up to this common program. This is unique in the world. It does not exist anywhere else, certainly, and not at that scale and with that kind of ambition that we currently have. Another characteristic uh, that SDGs and open science have in common is that of speed. If we want to deliver on sustainability promises, we have to act very quickly. There is no time to waste. And open science is about speeding up. It's about a faster and better circulation of data um, and knowledge. Um, so I would like to say that the SDGs um, are providing a very good and welcome purpose for the endeavor of science and even more if science becomes open so that it becomes very much responsive and relevant to society and what society expects uh, from science. Open science, we believe, will make science more impactful by being responsive to what science expects without necessarily being pushed or imposed agendas on it by uh, science. Um, but it will also make science more credible because it will give a lot more transparency in what is happening in the scientific world. We already see uh, this in concrete examples. Uh, when we had the Ebola outbreak, um, we really mobilized all the scientific actors, including on the industry side, to help develop a vaccine. This has been happening in a record time thanks to open science, because the data were shared. There was a sharing of all the data and the knowledge, which has helped us to deliver much quicker and better on a vaccine that was necessary when the Ebola crisis uh, broke out. I myself have seen very good examples in other areas. I know there are people here from the earth sciences uh, sector, 
uh, well, with the Belmont Forum, which is uh, a global forum of uh, research funders in the area of uh, global change with NSF in the United States, Japan, Brazil, etc. Um, we have uh, set up a program called Transformations to Sustainability, where social scientists from the North and from the South, together with natural scientists, identify a sustainability problem, a local sustainability challenge, develop solutions uh, together, and then put the solutions with all the data in a global knowledge trust so that everyone can have access to solutions that were developed to local sustainability problem and see if these solutions can be replicated elsewhere. This is the kind of open science, globally oriented, very much collaborative, excellent at the same time. That is the open science agenda that we want to promote and are promoting in the service of sustainability. Now, what I would like to add is um, that the EU really wants to take leadership um, in this regard. And I thank the ambassador for recognizing the leadership that uh, Europe has taken in this. Um, but why should that be the case? Why should Europe take leadership in this area? Well, it's very clear as uh, our president, uh, Jean-Claude Juncker, also recently said in his State of the Union speech, Europe is getting smaller. Demographically, um, we are maybe 7% of world population. Economically, our share is still important, but is declining. Um, we're now representing 15% of global GDP. But if you look at science, as the recent uh, report of the LAMI group also um, has said, in science, Europe is a powerhouse. We still represent about one-third of all scientific publications in the world. And that is the same for sustainability. I think it's fair to say that the SDGs and the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda would not have happened without Europe being there and taking the leadership um, in it. So for Europe to lead in open science for sustainability, that is really an occasion, an opportunity for Europe to help shape the global science uh, system so that our system is very much outward looking and that we can work together with scientists across the world to help deliver on the SDGs. Open science is about sharing, it's about caring, but also it's daring because we take the leadership. It's new, it's innovative. Um, I will not list here all the initiatives and the actions we are taking. Um, in terms of open access to publications, which is now a default um, policy in all the funding we have. Uh, we have now made the open access to data a default policy as well in the framework program in Horizon 2020 with the necessary opt-outs uh, when this is uh, justified. We have this very ambitious um, and challenging, I can tell you, venture of creating a European Open Science Cloud uh, where all the scientists through one portal can have access to data from all disciplines, um, very much promoting the transdisciplinary research agenda, which we believe is at the heart of scientific and innovation uh, progress in the future. We're working on alt metrics, alternative metrics, um, so that we can evaluate the contribution of scientists differently and reward them also in another way. We're working on integrity, we're working on citizen science, um, very much looking, in, especially in the next program, at how we can have more co-design of uh, research agendas with stakeholders, end users, citizens, but also co-create solutions through experimentation. And when you will see our work program um, for the last three years of Horizon 2020, adopted and presented on the 27th of uh, October, um, you will see that open science is really very much at the heart of our policy and of our uh, programs. Um, and we do all this in a very European way. Uh, we don't do this top-down. We don't impose it. Um, it would be great if we could come with a European directive that obliges everyone to go open science, but you know as well as I do that it doesn't work that way. We want to do this in a collaborative mode. We want to co-create this open science 
ecosystem with all the stakeholders, all of you who are here uh, tonight. And I really would like to thank you for your interest and your support in this endeavor. Thank you very much.